Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So I've seen this tag kind of floating around on booktube and I decided why not go along and kind of do this tag. Um, I'll link the original creators down below for this, um, but the original tag is called the Mid-Year Book Freakout Tag. I think this is a really neat tag because um, it made me like reflect on all the books that I've read this year. It has maybe like 15 or 16 questions. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So this reading year has been pretty good. I had some high points and some low points. I was looking I keep it all like all the books that I read I keep logged in my bullet journal and like yeah March was not a good month I will say and but yeah I've had a pretty good reading month um reading year I should say so it's been pretty good actually I've read quite a good like a good bunch of books which is really good um so the books that I do mention um I will have um if I have reviews about them, I'll link them down below in the cards above, so you can go check out for, like these books a little bit further if you're interested. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. So the first question is the best book that you've read so far, and this one was like, hands down really easy to pick out, and it was Still Life, Still Life by Louise Penny, and I really love this book. I read it uh, a couple months ago, and I was I. Like when I started get really getting into reading, I read a lot of crime books and I haven't like since I started booktube, I haven't read a lot of them since. So I wanted to kind of get back into them because I love them so much. And this one um, was one that I found that had really good reviews and it was the first one in the series that was like one of my credentials, like looking for a book, I wanted to start a new series. And this follows a uh, chief inspector, Gamache, who uh, works for the police department in uh, Quebec in Montreal. And and he is called out to a case um, to this small town called Three Pines where um, a elderly woman who is very loved in the community is shot. They think it might be a just like a fluke hunting accident but he thinks there's more to it that meets the eye and the author did such an amazing job. I was so like I could I want to live in this town like it was like I love how she developed a lot of the characters. The only downside is there's so many characters to keep track of but I could feel myself like know like I knew these people and I what I really liked is that um, Inspector Gamache is very different from what the stereotypical like detectives are he's very he's soft-spoken and he's quiet and he really respects his wife and will often call her and ask for advice which I really was like a really like a breath of fresh air and I loved it and also if you're Canadian like I am and had little Tim bits in there for you of like Canadian culture which was really neat so I can't wait to continue on with this series I just have to finish a couple more books on my TBR before I let myself kind of buy more books but I really love this book I highly recommend if you're looking into looking to getting into the crime like detective like genre I highly recommend you check this book out so question two is the best sequel that you've read so far and this one was also pretty easy to pick out and it was The Pearl Thief by Elizabeth Wine and this is technically a prequel to Codename Verity which is like by far one of my favorite series like books ever. I loved it so when I found out that we would get like kind of a prequel to get to know Julie a bit better I was really excited. This book came out I want to say in May and I finished it within a few days. I really love how we got to see kind of like in Codename Verity it's more we get to know Julie but we don't get to know a lot about her background and this book kind of showcases her when she's 16 and just kind of the dynamic and just how complex and just unique she is as a character it kind of built more up to her and made her more like in my eyes more likable and just more complex and dynamic which I really enjoyed seeing Elizabeth Wine I love her like the Coney Verity is like probably my best like favorite book ever so I would recommend reading Codename Verity first then this because there's kind of timbits in here that you're not supposed to know in Codename Verity so but I really love this book it was really good and yeah I really want to reread Codename Verity now but yeah it was a really good I love this kind of trilogy I guess it is now but it's really good I highly recommend that you check this series out it was so good and this prequel did not disappoint so question three is a new release that you haven't read yet but you really want to and this one is uh, something that's on my Amazon wish list and it is the woman in the castle by Jessica Shattuck and I saw this and 
immediately I was intrigued. It came out earlier this year, I want to say. I could be wrong, but basically I'll read kind of the synopsis on Amazon, but it says, set, th set at the end of World War II in a crumbling Bavarian castle that once played host to all of German high society, a powerful and propulsive story of three widows whose lives and fates become intertwined in affecting, shocking, and ultimately redemptive novel. Um, so it said, amid the ashes of Nazi Germany's defeat, uh, Maria... Marianne von Lingenfels, I'm not very good with German, um, returns to the once grand castle of her husband's ancestors, an imposing stone fortress now fallen into ruin following years of war. The, res the widow of her resistor murdered um, in the failed Jul July 20th, 1944 plot to assassinate Adolf Hitler. Marianne plans to uphold the promise she made to her husband's brave conspirators to find and protect their wives, her fellow resistance widows. So I think this one will be really interesting. It kind of reminds me of that. I forget the name of that movie. I don't know. I'll write it down below because it's making me think of that because I think that is the assassination plot that they're referring to. But yeah, it sounds really interesting. I'm a sucker for World War II novels, like historical fiction, so I'm really excited for this one. Like I said, I have to read a couple more books on my TBR before I let myself kind of buy it in bulk. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. I cannot wait to get my hands on this book, so yeah so question four is the most anticipated book for the rest of the year and this one is really easy it is i know a secret by tess gerritsen and this is the next book within the rizzoli and isles series this was like the kickstarter series that really got me into crime and detective novels and it was like the first series that i like made me really get into reading so i followed i started reading this series when i was in grade 10 and i'm in going into my second year of my master so it's followed me through a lot of things so i'm excited it's been a while since there's been a new book um, within this series so I'm really excited and yeah I already have it pre-ordered um, but yeah we're going to Boston and it's gonna be delivered so I'm like okay I'm gonna have to get the Kindle edition so I can read it on the way back but I don't know like I'm really really excited so yeah so question five is the biggest disappointment and for this one it would be Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake I read this book when I I tore my ACL back in October of 2016 but I didn't have my surgery until the end of February and so I did a lot of reading in February because I had a lot of free time on my hands but I like heard mixed things about this book but a couple of reviewers that I, opinions I really trust and really enjoyed it so I thought I would too but it was just I felt it to be the writing style was weird like nothing really happened for the first like 90% of the story um, it did end on a good like cliffhanger like that I was intrigued to see like what happened but it was just like it was not worth suffering through the 90% of the book and yeah like some of the sisters and like the love triangle in there like really really irritated me so it was just like I don't know I was not really a big fan of it um but I don't know I'm not sure if I'll continue on with the series right now I'm not I might just read kind of the summary of how it concludes but we'll see if the writing kind of improves um uh, in the second book that's set to release this year but yeah that was the biggest disappointment because I feel like even the plot had so much potential and it was just like <laughs> fell flat so yeah so question six is the biggest surprise so far and this one would have to be a fall of marigolds by Susan Mesner this was actually the first book for my book club that um, I started up in February or March I don't know I started up this was the first book so this was one that I had on my shelf for a while and I was like it seems interesting and it ended up being really surprise like surprisingly good I was so moved by it it follows like a dual storyline basically um, about two women one is about one takes place in uh, Ellis Island in 1911 I think so it follows Clara who um, kind of has locked herself away being like a nurse on Ellis Island she hasn't left the island since she started her job like over a year ago and that's because she suffered she was part of I always forget the name of this but it's the um, triangle shirtwaist fire which was basically a fire that happened in New York to this building and people were trapped so people were jumping out the windows and she witnessed that and she felt a lot of guilt about it because she was a nurse and she couldn't do anything about that so she's kind of stuck in this in-between place where she's not really moving forward and she's stuck in the past so it really kind of goes there and she ends up stumbling upon a man who has this marigold scarf 
and it kind of takes off from there and then flash forward to 2011 we also follow another another <laughs> another woman whose husband passed away during um the attack on the world trade center he passed away in there and she feels a lot of guilt because he wouldn't have been at the restaurant that was at there and he wouldn't have like died basically if she hadn't suggested that they go there so it was really complex uh if you're interested in joining this book club everything will be linked down below but yeah this one was really good i loved it really good i think in my real review and all that will be links in the cards and down below and if you're interested in joining the book club you know go ahead but yeah i really love this book it was so good and so moving and there's just so many good quotes in here but yeah i really enjoyed it so question seven is your new favorite author of this year so i have two for one of them you already know is louise penny from still life and then i have i can never pronounce this author's name it is robert brisenda um who wrote the girl in the ice which is another series that i tried out that was like crime one that i really enjoyed the authors of these were just really good i like this one because it has a little canadian timbits to it as well and she her writing was just very whimsical and just very like I felt like very gripped by it and then this author is really good as well he has a way of making it you, you get really intense reading it and you just want to fly through it and yeah like I like how this one also is like unlike the other crime ones that I've read like this one takes place kind of in modern times the other ones kind of take place in like the early 90s so it's a little dated but yeah I really enjoyed these two if you're looking to getting into crime check these two books out they are really good so question eight is your newest fictional crush so I couldn't really think of any like book characters so I decided to go with a kind of movie um, option for this one it would have to be Steve from Wonder Woman I love Chris Pine and I really loved him in this movie as well I think he's just I don't know what it is but I really love him and then also this is like the beast but like Dan Stevens from Beauty and the Beast like yeah He's not fictional because he's a real person, but like, yeah, he's up there too. But like between Chris Pine and Dan Stevens from Beauty and the Beast and Wonder Woman, like, you know, it was a good year for me for like, you know, watching really attractive men on the big screen. So, yeah. Question nine is your newest favorite character. And then kind of going back to a repeat here is uh, Inspector Gamache. I can't wait till we learn more about him in future books because they give you timbits of like what... You know his past um, so it'll be interesting to see how he grows and like the adventures that he goes on and learning and covering more about his past because there's something that happened that we don't know too much about that was mentioned briefly so hopefully I'll cover that in future books but yeah he was just really neat like I said he was really unique compared to the other detectives that we usually see and it was really nice and I really appreciate it and he's and he is just really interesting so so question 10 is a book that made you cry and i didn't cry i haven't cried for any of the books this year um so i decided to go with the tv show option and it was the last episode of bones that aired i want to say in like end of april or around april <laughs> and like i love bones it's like my favorite show i have like all of the seasons on dvd now which is nice i have them all there but i love the show i want to i double majored for my undergrad and one of them was anthropology and that was because of that show i kind of learned about the field um yeah i <laughs> i like i was at work when it aired live so i watched it the next morning um on itunes and i literally cried for like an hour my eyes were just bloodshot for the rest of the day and yeah i was just very emotional that whole day but that like I cried hard <laughs> so yeah now I can go back and like watch and like once I'm done with like school I think I can like actually go back and like watch it from the beginning because I think I would really like it and so and I'll have more free time on my hands once I'm actually officially done with school so that will be really nice <laughs> something to look forward to when I graduate besides actual graduation but yeah <laughs> Question 11 is books, a book that made you happy, and this one would have to be A Court of Wings of Ruin by Sarah J. Mass. Um, I was not a big fan of A Court of Thorns and Roses. I had a lot of issues with that, um, but I really loved A Court of Mist and Fury, so I was really excited for this book to come out, and I just flew through it. It was... Like it's just under 700 pages, but I kind of sped through it. I love this book cover too. It is stunning. Um, but yeah, it just made me so happy just because I was like, okay. And like, 
I'm not gonna spoil anything, but it was just a very happy book, even though bad things happen in it, but I just was really happy reading it because I was just really invested in the characters and just the storyline, so yeah, I just felt really happy reading it, even though, you know, it wasn't the happiest of reads in terms for the characters, but I really loved it. So question 12 is the your favorite book to movie or book to TV show adaptation and I didn't see any new ones this year so I'm just staying with just regular movies so the two favorite movies that I've seen this year would have to be the Beauty and the Beast um, remake with Emma Watson I loved it I remember um, I think I associate really good memories with it because it was a couple weeks post-op so I couldn't drive my leg was locked in like full extension so my friends knew I was really kind of excited to see it so they took me on the Friday that it, it premiered to the movie theater so I think I just associate it with those kind of happy times and then also Wonder Woman I saw this with my brother and sister and it was really good I cannot wait to see it again when it comes out on blu-ray so hopefully that will be within a couple months but it was really good I loved it you know girl power taken down the patriarchy so my sister was so pumped after she saw it she's like yeah but yeah I really enjoyed it it was really good so those are, there was really good year for movies so far, so yeah. So number 13 is the favorite video that you've done this year, and I think it would have to be one of the top five Wednesdays videos that I did, and it was the books that are like are associated with your Hogwarts house, and I am a Ravenclaw um, officially by Pottermore, but I consider myself more of a Gryffindor, but that's okay. So I just did that um, book, and that was probably my most positively received like most had the most views and I got a lot of commentary behind it and like people really liked my unique suggestions so I'll link that up in the cards here um, and down below for you so you can go check that out but I really enjoyed making it it was fun it was fun finding books that kind of fit that kind of like what Ravenclaws would like so I had a really fun time filming that one so yeah I was happy a lot of people liked it because I liked making it too so the next question is the most beautiful book and this one is one that just came in the mail yesterday and it was such a pain because I ordered it back in early early June and it just came yesterday like July 10th so it took over a month to get here and like it disappeared like the tracking number if you like I, I don't know if you've had this problem but like DHL for some reason like I've had packages just mysteriously disappear from them and never to show up, but this one did, so it was weird because it, they don't have tracking information about it anymore, and then UPS never, like, or USPS never, like, like, received it for some reason, so it was really weird, but it finally got here, and I'm happy, all good in the world, and it is the 20th anniversary of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I got both the paperback version and the... I guess hardcover one I'm like I was considering getting the Ravenclaw version of this too um, we'll see we'll hold on to it so I just did these ones for now um, but yeah I really like this I couldn't decide so I just got both but basically I love these new anniversary editions this one kind of has a spray painted size for the paperback and I also knew um, like I heard that they have like other information in here as well about each house which I think will be really neat yeah so they have like about like the house ghost and like Gryffindor and like all that stuff so that's really neat and then this one also kind of has the uh, Gryffindor like golden red colors as well so yeah I really was like I don't know maybe I'll just pick up all the houses one so I can just have them but like who knows but I was really happy these finally came the package it like the book is a little beat up but that's okay they're mostly for me looking at because they're just really pretty. So the final question for this tag is a book that you want to read by the end of the year and this one is something that's been on my TBR for a while um, and I'm thinking of making it the August book pick for the month of next month so if you're interested all that will be listed down below but basically this one is the forgotten garden by Kate Morton I know my mom and my aunts have all read this and they really like it um, 
so I'm per I've read The Lake House by this author and then I'm currently reading The Secret Keeper which I really love so far. So yeah this one is her other book and basically it says a tiny girl is abandoned on a ship headed to Australia in 1913. She arrives completely alone with nothing but a small suitcase containing a few clothes and a single book, a beautiful volume of fairy tales. She is taken in by the dock master and his wife and raised of their own. On her 21st birthday they tell her the truth and with her sense of self shattered and um and very little to go on, Nell uh, sets out to trace her real identity. Her quest leads her to Blackhurst Manor on the Cornish coast and the secrets of a Dune Montrac family, um, but it is not until her granddaughter uh, Cassandra takes up the search after Nell's death that all the pieces of the puzzle are assembled. So I think this one will be very interesting. I cannot wait to see, you know, this author does a really good job with her stories. I've really enjoyed all of them so far. So yeah, I'm excited to see, you know, re pick this up next month because that's currently the plan because we're going on vacation to Boston and I will probably have a lot of reading time just in travel alone. And this is a pretty big book. It's just like 550 pages. So yeah. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what some of your favorite books that you've read this month. And don't forget to do this tag. I can of anyone who's interested uh feel free to let me know if you do this tag i'd love to watch it so yeah don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and i will see you guys next time bye guys